Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here, and today we're going to be looking at the most epic transport operations in history. So, we likely transport things every day. Maybe we just put it in our car, or maybe we use the postal service. But there are some things so massive you won't believe they were moved anywhere. You may assume that ginormous buildings and machines are built on the spot, but a lot of the time these are built and then moved in various amazing ways. Before we get into it, why not move over to that subscribe button, press it, and press the notification bell too. Coming in at number 10 we have Bagger288. Imagine the biggest car, biggest ship, biggest plane in the world. They'd all be pretty big vehicles, but the Bagger 288 is the largest land vehicle in the world. It's a massive digger and it looks absolutely terrifying. It's 27 million pounds and is used to dig mines. It can also level massive ridges and move mountain ranges. It was built by a German company designed for coal mining, but it can do many more things than just that. And it's thought to have cost over a billion dollars to build. But it's worth the investment, as it can dig 480 million pounds of coal every single day. That's a market value of over 10 million dollars per day. Well, one day it had finished mining in Germany and needed to be moved to another mine 14 miles away. So, the Bagger 288 had to move across the Autobahn, which is the German highway. This is a highway where there is no speed limit. The Bagger 88 also had to go across railway tracks and even a river. Now, seeing as this is so massive, you may assume thousands of people were involved in this. But amazingly, this only took 70 people to supervise. That is because it has three 12 foot wide tank treads. This allows it to go pretty much anywhere. But not only was the transportation difficult, it also costs around 20 million dollars. But it's still cheaper than building a brand new one for over a billion dollars. Next up is Vatican Statues. This one proves that epic transportation feats don't always have to include big things. Sometimes they just have to be super valuable and precious. It's where every culture and country comes together to share. Nearly 100 nations were in attendance of this and they sent over various things like restaurants and relics for people to look at. But out of every country that went, the most popular was the Vatican. That is because they did something they've never done before, send over two statues from the Vatican. Pope John Paul decided to send over two very, very valuable Vatican statues. One of these was Michelangelo's Pieta. This is said to be a literally priceless statue which is in the Vatican most of the time. The Good Shepherd statue was also moved to New York for the event. These were put in two and a half ton steel cases to prevent from any dangers. In case its cargo ship sank, the container could actually float. And even if the ship did sink, it could still be found due to a GPS tracker and a light beacon system. They only took out $6 million of insurance on these statues. And as I said, the price of them is literally, well, priceless. Next up is Super Guppy. The Super Guppy is owned by NASA and is a massive, unusual looking plane. If you're wondering who sits in this plane, it's not people, instead it's another plane. This is jet powered and is built with warehouse material. The plane itself is very light and has to be as it has to hold over 27 tons. There are only 5 of these in existence and NASA have been building them since the 1960s. Unlike any other plane on earth, there's a side hinge to this plane to get the other aeroplanes inside. NASA moved things such as T-38 jets inside these. And in one instance they even moved two T-38 jets at the same time. Many say that alien and UFO spacecrafts are also transported using the Super Guppy. Next up we have G2 Magnet. So the new one G2 Magnet is a 50 foot wide magnet, but it had to be moved over 3400 miles. Amazingly they did this by road and it took over 35 days. That's right, over a month just to use one magnet. They mainly did this by road, but in some cases they did have to use a boat to cross over rivers. But what was the world's largest magnet even used for? Well, it was needed for what's called the Nuon Experiment. This was an experiment involving subatomic particles. A 60 ton metal truck and apparatus was used to move this magnet around. And it was equipped all the time with a massive police motorcade. It cost around 30 million dollars to move this thing. And no one took any breaks while moving this, they just took shifts for 35 days. Because it's so delicate, it could only move a few miles per hour. I'm just glad I didn't get stuck behind this on the highway. Next up is Saturn V Apollo Rocket. If you thought NASA's Super Guppy was an epic feat of transportation, check this out. Of course one of the most famous transportations was transporting man to the moon. Now you can control where a rocket launches from, but you can't control where it lands. Or at least back in the 1960s you couldn't. So when the Apollo 11 rockets landed, how did NASA get them back to their facility? Well one rocket which never took off which had to be moved back was the Apollo 19 138 foot rocket. 
This was made in 1973 and was to be used for the last ever lunar mission. It was outside of the NASA factory that made it. But in June of 1973, it had to be moved to the border between Mississippi and Louisiana. The journey was only 40 miles, but it took nearly six days to complete. It was moved along the Pearl River and was quite a sight to see. Next up is Oil Rig. The Eni Noriga Oil Rig is the largest oil rig on the planet. It's located in Norway, but it had to be moved when they found more oil. So you may be wondering, how do you move an oil rig? Well, they used something called the Dockwise Vanguard. This is one of the largest ships on Earth and it was made in Holland. First, they had to move the ship from South Korea all the way to Norway. Then they had to use the world's largest power core to move this ginormous oil rig. Next up is Nuclear Reactor. One day, a company from Saudi Arabia had to transport a 1,500 ton nuclear reactor. Not only that, it had to go over 700 miles on steep desert hills. Two hydraulic trailers took it up various long winding roads. The motorcade they had was absolutely massive and involved around 20 vehicles at a time. They had to attach around 40 trucks and trailers to support the weight and the length of this thing. But amazingly, this only required one driver to manage the entire system. However, around 100 people at any given time were supervising this massive operation. Next up, we have Meteorite. This one took place a while back in 1894. American Robert Perry traveled to Greenland to view the Cape York Meteorite. The Cape York Meteorite actually landed 10,000 years ago before it was discovered. Only a few Inuits were living on the area, so they were amazed when Perry showed up. He even transported the solid iron ore meteorite back to New York. Him and his team made massive railroads and ginormous iron chain links. This was then transported onto boats and it now resides in the American Museum of Natural History. If you live in New York, go and check it out and let me know how big this meteorite really is. Next up is Binocular Telescope. So, telescopes can be small things you have in your bedroom or ginormous things used by NASA. But what about the largest binocular telescope in the world? Well, one day the world's largest telescope had to be moved to the top of Emerald Peak Mountain in Arizona. And the 30 foot long telescope required over a year of planning. The actual transportation took over a week as well. They did have to drive over 10,000 miles up to the top of this mountain to place the telescope there. But amazingly, they did it with a heavily enforced cargo load. The telescope itself is around 40,000 pounds. But as they cleared all the roads, they were able to go quite fast at 45 miles per hour. The telescope is now responsible for some of the best ever views of space from Earth. Next up is Aerial Crane. Have you ever heard of an aerial crane? You likely haven't, as they're very rare but also amazing. An aerial crane is where a helicopter is used to carry a heavy load. Have you ever wondered how large electrical pylons are moved around? Well, they use an aerial crane using helicopters. Aerial cranes are also sometimes used for moving cargo off ships. And in one unbelievable photo, aerial cranes are seen picking up a ship. I really would love to experience an amazing aerial crane in person. Let me know if you guys have. Click and vote in the poll in the top right corner and you can choose the most epic transportation operation in history. I think it's the Bagger 288, as that is amazing and scary. If you guys want more amazing videos, check out my second channel. There'll be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.